In this lesson, we're going to continue working on our game's audio and start on our character sounds. The first thing that we're going to get rocking here is the character's footstep sounds. So let's get this going now. So going back to the previous lesson, in our project here, we have all our audio files in here. So let's quickly locate our feats. Character footsteps. Let's think, where is this sound source going to come from? I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to come from our character. Alright, so what do we need to add to any game object that has sound to play back? We definitely will need to add an audio source. So let's go like so. Audio source. So now let's click on these footsteps, drag them into our audio clip, and let's uncheck play on awake. So uh, we have our audio source applied to our game character and we have our footsteps rock in here. So let's check the loop because I want these footsteps to loop as they're playing and that's all there is to it to set this up initially here. Now we need to get into a little bit of scripting here. So what I want to have happen is to detect every time our character is moving then play back these footstep sounds because the only way this character can move is when he's walking so let's uh, tag on those footstep sounds to that. Where can we detect when he's moving? Well, seems pretty safe to say character movement script. So let's open this thing up here. Alright, and within this script let's go down to the bottom and let's create our own custom function here. And this is going to be for our footstep audios. So what do we got here? We have our, well let's just name it clearly, let's go void uh, play footstep audio. And there we have our brand new created function. So what do we need to do here? Well we need to detect if our character is moving. And how will we do that? Well you remember if move direction which basically is zero when we're not moving. And as soon as we press a key, it's going to set itself to one, right? So we know whenever he's moving, move direction is not at zero. So let's do that. If move direction is not equal to zero, let's do another if statement within this, okay? If it's not at zero, let's create another if statement to make one more decision here. If our character is moving and if audio okay anytime we type audio it's going to look for the audio source that's on this game object right now is playing all right so we want to say if audio is not playing and our character is moving right okay then let's go create our another brackets to contain this if statement here then let's grab our audio and just simply say play and what else do we have here? Well, we have that. I'm just going to create our brackets to close off this main if statement here. We're going to need one more to close off this main whole function here. All right. Just make sure you close off all your brackets. Audio.play and this one. I'm just going to tab over. And I'm getting super confused. So let me just tab out, make that. There we go. It's a lot more clear now. And now what do we need to do? Let's say else. And let's just go like this, audio.stop. So here we have it, just to be safe. I always like to add brackets around whatever I can here. And uh, let's go like so. All right, this is quite a function, but um, it's super efficient. So what do we have here? Let's quickly review this. Sorry, my cursor's gone all wonky on me here. Um, anyways. Um, we have our function created, void play footsteps audio. So we know what this is going to do. And basically we're just asking if move direction is not equal to zero. So this is pretty much telling us here um, if, if our character is moving and we are checking and um, if audio is not playing attached to this character, which is our footsteps, Foots. then play audio. Okay, and then let's go here and let's just say if he's not moving, stop audio playback. All right, so we have this whole statement created, this whole function, and we have our brackets here. And uh, going up, 
public class. This is the main class bracket. I'm sorry, I just have, I'm having bracket syndrome here. Okay, so what's the heck are these ones? If this goes linked with anything? Um, okay, I don't think so. And this one here? No. I don't know why I had those, but let's delete those. Just keep up clean. So there we have it. So we have our function created. Okay, so now we need to actually go ahead and call this function. So let's go up here to our update. Okay, and let's say, let's call upon this. Let's just call it footsteps audio. Play footsteps audio. So now it's constantly going to be checking uh, on our conditions here. Let's say playback of footstep audio. All right, so that's that there. So let's save this and let's just, uh, fingers crossed that everything's all good to go here. So let's uh, hit play. Okay, so we're not moving. We shouldn't hear anything. There we go. I can hear the footsteps. Stop moving. There we have it. Now there's one glitch. Notice how he's moving and his footsteps are going, but he's jumping. We shouldn't hear anything. All right, so we need to take care of that right away. Simple, simple thing to do. All we need to do is just add a one little condition to our main function here. Play footsteps out. If he's moving and he is grounded. Simple. If he's grounded. If he's not grounded, do not play footsteps. That is just weird. Okay, so let's test this out. There we go. Perfect. All right, so there we have it. We have our footsteps all set up. That is audio playing back based off of our player condition. In the next lesson, we're gonna move on to adding sounds using animation events on our characters to play the sound of him throwing his mighty dagger. I will see you in the next lesson.